You can actually see the ethmoid bone from this perspective in your skull, although you can't see very much of it. It's right here. And if you remember, like try to visualize putting a brain in there. You actually have, however you want to think about this, you actually, you've, you've got your optic nerve, your cranial nerve that's coming through, and we've already identified that that passes through grooves and holes in the sphenoid bone. But the ethmoid bone, there's a cranial nerve that has um, structures that pass through the ethmoid bone. And so it's actually this kind of weird blocky looking bone. From that perspective, you're like, dude, that thing's tiny. And it kind of looks tiny. It's the yellow bone in rainbow marble, rainbow skull. And so it actually, it's, it's bigger, it's blockier than it looks here. So I'm going to go show you a picture of ethmoid, like removed. Yeah. It, I mean, seriously, what a weird shaped bone. This is looking at the ethmoid straight on. This is looking down on the ethmoid. So if I'm looking straight on from this guy, I'm actually, maybe I just will pull it apart. Actually, ethmoid is really hard to get out of here. You have to really concentrate. I do in my spatially challenged world to put it back together again. So I'm going to leave it in there. But if I look down like this, that's the view that I'm seeing here. If I look in like this, that's the view I'm seeing here. So I'm going to label some parts for you of the ethmoid bone. First of all, I told you that there were little foramina that somebody was passing through, and that's the actually cranial nerve number one, the olfactory bulb, has all those little extensions that embed in the olfactory epithelium, and, and that's how you pick up smell, and those are called the cribriform foramina, and there are tons of tiny little holes and that's how you're, and I, I'm pointing them out because I think that they're helpful for orienting top and bottom. And when you're looking down, it makes sense that you're going to have to have a way for the smell for um, cranial nerve number one to get into your nose. There's a, an extension. So if you're looking from this perspective, here's my little extension. It's called Krista Gali. And if I were able to go backwards into this space, you would then you would totally see the cribriform foramina. Cristagali goes up. There's another structure that goes down, and that structure is called the perpendicular plate. Perpendicular plate on the bottom, cribriform, I mean Cristagali on the top. Now, I have no examples of a good perpendicular plate because our, um, our samples or examples of even our, we have a skull, a disarticulated skull that has all the individual bones. And even on that, ours does not have this nice clean perpendicular plate flanked by these things that actually do have names. So, um, I, I don't think that it's something that I would ever actually be able to pin, but it is something that you should know that it is there. It's the downward half of Krista Gali going up. You can see Krista Gali on all of our skulls. You can see it on our little ethmoid bone by itself. Here's the other thing. Oh, I love it when we make connections and we bring things back and then we can remember things easier. Do you remember? the nasal conchi. We had a superior, a middle, and an inferior nasal conchi. The superior and middle nasal conchies are actually parts of the ethmoid bone. So would I ever be, I mean, you know me, dude, I can't visualize, I can't visualize what my house looks like if I get turned around and pointing backwards. So no, there's no way that I can actually visualize that's my house calling right now saying, dude, you better know how to memor or visualize me, but I'm just going to let it ring because I have to finish this lecture. So what was I even saying? Those superior and, in, and middle nasal conchi are part of the ethmoid bone. Now, 
I won't ask you that on a bone. I won't say, where's the superior nasal conchi? Where's the inferior nasal conchi? I will ask you on Linda's half head because we know where the middle nasal conchi is. We can actually see it and lay a pin upon it. And I can say, name this structure. Yeah, nice try. Name this structure and tell me the, um, the bone that lies beneath it. So it, that's the middle nasal conchi, and that bone beneath it is the ethmoid bone. Now, um, it isn't the case with the inferior nasal conchi. I think I told you everything, and now I'm going to call my family. Be right back.